بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمد ونصلي على رسول الكريم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome to this Juma reminder Alhamdulillah we just had um, the first 10 days of the Hijjah and Eid and so forth and as we know that in Zulhijjah if you fast on the 9th or the day of Arafah then the reward is that one year of the previous year and one year of the following year of sins uh, is expiated and this is out of the Rahmah the kindness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon this Ummah that we've been given so many special days, so many special months in which um, really if a person applied himself even a little bit, a few days here and a few days there, um, a little bit in the morning, a little bit in the evening, a person will attain uh, not just forgiveness of sins, uh, which is also a very huge thing if all your sins are wiped out, uh, but uh, attain very high level and grades. Uh, in paradise inshallah ta'ala and very high grades of the rida of Allah subhanahu wa the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so now we're in the month of uh, at the threshold of the month of Muharram um, so the month of Muharram uh, is a special month it's also the beginning of the uh, Islamic uh, year or Islamic uh, calendar the Hijri calendar and Muharram is one of the four uh, holy months uh, that has been explicitly uh, mentioned and uh, it's mentioned in the Quran, mentioned the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The three of them, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, uh, one year consists of twelve months, uh, of which four are sanctified. They have hurma, they have sanctity. Uh, three of them are in sequence: Zul Qada, Zul Hijjah, and Muharram. And the fourth is uh, Rajab, uh, which is not, which is separate by itself, which is the month two months before Ramadan. Um, it doesn't mean that the these months are just um, uh, that the other months don't have any sanctity or specialness because Ramadan is one of those other months. That means from that we understand that all the months have. But Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has singled these months out, and they have a sanctity even to the pagans of Makkah. They held these months in the Mushrikeen, the idol worshippers of Makkah. They held these months in high esteem because they've inherited aspects of the they had in, in, inherited the as, aspects of the sharia uh, the law of Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he chooses certain months uh, for his special blessings special forgiveness special uh, expiation kafara of sins for the people to forgive their sins uh, thus therefore we should um, make it a point um, that I mean, even the mushrikeen held gave importance they would not fight, fight any of their wars their tribal wars in this month because they had sanctity sins are bad always sins are haram always but in, when it's a special place or a special time then it's even more offensive therefore we should not just go through these months like as though um, you know they're like any other month uh, of the year uh, of course the months in the Islamic calendar are divided are decided according to the lunar calendar based on the uh, appearance and disappearance of the beginning of the new uh, each month starts with the beginning of the new uh, hilal or the crescent um, and the as opposed to the Gregorian calendar generally what we do our work and so forth in Australia uh, January till December calendar is based on the solar uh, calendar um, and these months also have been incorporated uh, although they origin are from Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam their sanctity, but they are incorporated into Sharia, Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So in this month, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the best fast are the fast of Ramadan. We know that, it's farad upon us. And, um, and after the fast of Ramadan are those that are uh, in the month of uh, uh, Muharram. So the best fast are the, after the fast of Ramadan are the fast of the holy month of Muharram. Um, the fast of Muharram are not uh, obligatory. They are nafal. And if a person was to make a point to fast the whole month, they can do it. There's no restriction. A person can take as many as rewards as the person wants. Uh, if, if we push ourselves, then we can get more. Uh, those who work harder, they will achieve more. It's a rule of this world, whether it be for deen or dunya. Um, uh, but the reward of that does not mean that you cannot, you can't achieve the reward in other months as well. Um, based on uh, it being a nafal. So we should avail the opportunity to maximize our rewards uh, as the Prophet ﷺ has encouraged uh, fasting uh, in this month. There's a day in this month called the day of Ashura, 
uh, which is a tenth of Muharram. And if a person fasts a tenth of uh, Muharram, one year of sins are expiated. So last month, basically one month before the tenth, uh, you had all the sins of the previous year and the next year forgiven. Now on only a month later, another day is given. And we can say uh, one is before the new year, one is after the new year. And after the, I mean, we don't make a new year like, um, uh, like the kuffar in the sense that they, you can see their new year is singing and dancing and drinking and all sorts of sins and vice in the night. Um, because in some Muslim countries, unfortunately, uh, you know, monkey see, monkey do. We've also adopted certain characteristics to make a new Islamic New Year. So people do fireworks and all sorts of israf and wastage and so forth, which is something that our Prophet ﷺ uh, did not teach us. So the 10th of uh, uh, Muharram is Ashura. And there are many hadiths regarding Ashura and the significance of which is that when the Sahaba, the Prophet ﷺ and Sahaba when they arrived in from Mecca to Medina, that he noticed uh, that the Yahud were fasting uh, on the 10th uh, of uh, um, Muharram in uh, Medina. And when he asked them why, he said, this is as a, um, as a uh, you know, a, to be grateful, to show gratefulness that Allah drowned uh, Fir'aun, destroyed Fir'aun and saved the Yahud. So the Prophet Sallallahu said, we have more right to Musa Alayhi than you. Because we are the Ummah of Tawheed. We follow Sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't make Sharia of man-made, we don't f follow man-made laws. Uh, when it comes to, you know, the, when there's a, when Allah's law is there and a human being's law is there, we follow the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Unlike the Yahud, who have abandoned the uh, Torah, they've abandoned the way of Musa alayhi salam. So we have more right to that day uh, than you do. So Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instituted to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi salam that that day they say the Musa alayhi salam. And this is something for us to reflect. How did Musa salam and uh, Bani Israel got saved? What are the things that they did? It's something that this Ummah should look at. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned Musa salam as the most mentioned Nabi in the Quran and Bani Israel the most mentioned Ummah uh, in the uh, Quran. And the reason is because we're the most similar. So, And the Prophet salam warned us that we're going to make all the mistakes, all the things that if you read the Quran, the history of Bani Israel, who were at the top when they arrived in Egypt. When Yusuf, uh, when Yusuf salam, and his brothers arrived in Egypt, they were the ruling class. They became the ministers and advisors because of Yusuf. Salam. They had a very respectable position, that Yusuf. Salam, as generations and generations passed, and they increased into hundreds of thousands. By the time that Musa, salam, or just before Musa, salam, the degeneration and corruption in Bani Israel. The rot had set so much in them. They were themselves so far away from Allah and deen. The conditions were not brought upon them because of the, because they became disobedient. They became rebellious. So if you look at most of the da'wah of Sayyidina uh, Musa alayhi salam and Harun alayhi salam is to the Bani Israel themselves. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and very few, few conversations are there between Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam and Fir'aun. The corrupt Muslims were, had to be rectified. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, without any fighting, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroyed and dealt with uh, Sayyidina, uh, the Musa alayhi salam's enemy, Fir'aun. So it's something for us to reflect how they were saved. Not just miracles happened. There's a background to this whole incident we should study. So the Bani Israel, when they came in, they came in an honorable position through Sayyidina Yusuf alayhi salam. And then they reached the time Musa, their sons were being killed. Their women were allowed to live. They were humiliated. They were taken as slaves, um, tortured, and mistreated. What happened in between? How did they end up from that? Because Sayyidina Yusuf salam, and his brothers, when they came, they established justice. They were respected people. People looked up to them. But over time, the Bani Israel became corrupted. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put a person like Fir'aun over them and did zulm to them and oppression to them. And the way out for them, as mentioned in the uh, Quran, is they had to learn how to do salat properly, establish salat. Seek Allah's help through Salat, right? And they had to uh, learn how to rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they had to learn how to make those sabr spiritually. They were trained and trained until the point uh, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they became deserving of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's help. So there's a, there's a lot of detail to this. So the story of Bani Israel in Egypt at the rise and fall is also our story. The story of the Ummah of Rasulullah that once upon a time this Ummah ruled the world. They were the dominant force 
and then he became like the bits and pieces and what we have today that we are bits and pieces in a stage of state of humiliation uh, where anybody that can sp speaks about establishing deen and so forth is unable to do so that you know even muslims will counter and go against another muslim who will try to establish or talk about deen uh, in a serious way and when they do that even muslims will call other muslims narrow-minded and uh, will oppose before any non-muslim or kafir will come uh, uh, to oppose them so uh, ashura is a special day but also the significance there's a reason there's a whole background story to it so rasulullah taught us to fast us fast on this day to celebrate acknowledge that day that bani israel was saved from Fir'aun, and musa alayhi salam bani israel was saved and also it was um rasulullah but also rasulullah made our fast different from that of the yahud what he said was to fast either the day before or the day after so the 10th of muharram is the special uh, the ashura is on the 10th um rasulullah taught us to fast one day before or one day after the 9th or the 10th or the 10th and the 11th in that way we don't resemble and copy uh, the Yahud even in Rasulullah such tarbiyah he gave to this ummah that at every step we have to be careful not to become just imitators and copy what we think is good and what Rasulullah institutes like these days this is Sharia. Anybody comes up afterwards and try to establish a special day or a national day and so forth. These are man-made things. These can change. So if they're not Sharia, they're not deen, they're not required. There's no holiness to them. Rasulullah vouched for these days. He's told us these days. It's become part of deen. Deen is something that is established only through Rasulullah through wahi, through revelation. It cannot be established uh, afterwards. Anything that comes after, any masala, new masala comes, has to be sourced in wahi, in revelation, back to Rasulullah also, uh, in this uh, day, there are some misconceptions regarding this day, that this is the day of the repentance of Sayyidina Adam alayhi salam. It's a misconception or that Qiyamah will take place on this day or that uh, one should take a bath. Uh, if it's someone takes a bath on this day, I mean, we make up all these sort of things. People make up that if you take a bath, that you're not on Ashura, you'll not get sick. Some people make a special dish, a meal, a sweet, uh, so forth. There's no basis uh, for that. Um, these are just made up things people make up. There is a narration that um, although the, some ulama have considered reliable, others have considered the very weak, the chain of narration being weak, that in this day to be generous or extra generous uh, to one's family, uh, but providing more food to them on this day compared to other days. And if a person generous, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be uh, generous to that person. Uh, but it's not a very strong narration. Other people unfortunately have made it a day, uh, some people considered uh, Muharram na'uzubillah to be uh, a month of bad luck because Sayyidina Hussain radiallahu anhu, a historical incident where he was made shaheed in this month, specifically on the day of Ashura. Um, the acts, the fast, ibadah of Ashura has got nothing to do with Sayyidina Hussain radiallahu anhu. It coincided, that incident coincided with, um, with, uh, um, uh, with Ashura, but the events, amal that we do of Ashura has got nothing to do with the shahadat Sayyidina Hussain radiallahu anhu the prophet's grandson like we can't just make up holidays people make up holidays and so forth and the way they make the holidays slapping themselves hitting themselves explicitly in bukhari sharif explicitly in our sharia is for, forbidden to and rasulullah called it slapping yourself and hitting yourself in mourning is a act of jahiliyyah that these are the acts of jahiliyyah some people have made jahiliyyah actions of people that are outside of Islam, mushrikeen, idol worshippers before Islam, have made it as though that this is he, uh, have made it the acts of, uh, 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 as part and parcel, na'uzubillah of deen, which is uh, a very dangerous uh, thing to do. And have taken this to the, ex and this is a month to mourn, it's not a month to mourn, it's a month of ibad, it's a month of fasting, it's a sp special month to do extra ibad, inshallah. So, if we can um, avail of those, that special day, inshallah, um, and we can avail of those, this special month and make extra amal inshallah and give the month the, its due right and consider it as something special. Um, many, many historical events that happened before and after uh, this month, but those don't decide any specific amal. It's a historical, maybe we can use it as a means of reminder, all right, this happened. I would say don't do that because maybe do it in the next month because people have become attached to talk about certain things certain which has got nothing to do with that month and it distracts from what the talimat of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam what I told you about fasting what I told you about the 9th and the 10th or the 10th or the 11th fasting these are the things to do and at most if you spend on your family on the 10th as in a week narration uh, that is mentioned 
these are the things to do. Uh, but we don't want to do those things, fasting and prayer and tilawat and dhikr. We have to go for the every odd thing. As my father, rahimullah, said, you know these uh, birthdays of sheikhs people celebrate. He said that every, if you take all the sheikhs of our history, imams of our history, awliya of history, he goes, you'll be celebrating a birthday every day. So this, there's no limit to it. So Sharia has put guidelines of which days are special, which days uh, uh, Rasulullah himself from Allah subhanahu wa taught us the days. Now those people that want to make other days, um, and so forth, and you know, and but all right, uh, you know, if people want to make harmony day and God knows what else that Muslims are adding, we're piling it on. Um, but uh, we, as a Muslim, um, we will be rewarded for what Rasulullah said that we'll be rewarded for. Therefore, those teachings we should uphold and not make this, we should not make this a month of mourning, and we should not make it a month of, uh, you know, um, there's also all sorts, a, lo- a list of a, lo- a lot of other things that people do. Uh, the dishes, the sweet dishes, this has become, it's like a cancer in some society because nafs is there. We like certain sweets and so forth and we attach it to a certain day. We have to cook halim or we have to cook this type of sweet dish or that sweet dish. But they have, it has no basis in sharia. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us and forgive the ummah of Rasulullah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ta'ala give us tawfiq and make the maximum benefit, take maximum benefit from this month in ibadah. Uh, may Allah give us tawfiq uh, to practice what we're saying here. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.